All right, all right. What is happening, people? Hey, guys. Oh, uh, boom. First fish of the day, baby. I am at, that's a good fish. That's about 11 inch crappy. I am at Sharon Harris. Uh, that is located south of Cary, North Carolina. Uh, this is the second time I've been here. I came a couple of weeks ago and uh, there was a struggle. We wound up catching some nice size crappie, but I didn't find the numbers. Anyway, in today's video, I'm gonna go over uh, how I select where I fish. And uh, anyway, stay with me and hope you enjoy the video. So anyway, came, I ducked in this cove. It's in the morning, you see I have some shade here. And you see the bank's a little higher here, so I figured I had some trees in the water. So I'm checking this brush in this cove. I just came up, picked a cove that wasn't a boat in. And, uh, and I'm gonna just run this cove. There's a lot of fish action this morning here. So anyway, there's a tree under the water here. I don't know if you can see it. But anyway, I'm gonna turn around and see if I can catch another crappie out of it. Another nice crappie, y'all. Good crappie. Look at that. That's a good fish right there, y'all. Oh, Sharon Harris. You know, Sharon Harris is known to have some nice sized crappie. That's one reason I decided to come down here. That's a nice fish right there. Uh, that's a good 12 inch fish. Look at the shoulders on that joker. Uh, fishing the, <clears throat> the hot tail bait. LC Shad, I'm not keeping fish today. Probably should. I have a good feeling about today. There's a lot of back fish activity today. And this tree looks like a pine has fell off the bank here. And oh, there's some structure out here. Not sure if these fish are just hanging around the structure in the shade or whether they're still actively spawning. Uh, I, we'll have to check a little closer on the next fish we catch just to see and you know just basically uh, there are some limbs down there in the water and I'm trying to avoid getting hung in them and I'm just basically pitching out there I just came over a limb there but oh got just got bit and uh, water's about 12 foot deep here it's a little deeper right in the center of the cove and uh, I just kind of came in here with side scan and I noticed uh, using side scan, there was a lot of structure in the water. There was still some shade here, so I kind of felt like this would be a good, uh, a good spot to actually, you know, start fishing. I haven't really picked any colors yet uh, to see if these fish keyed in on. I happen to have this green shad already tied on, and I just decided it was the closest rod to me. That's the one I picked up. You know, there may be crappy on all of these logs uh, in these coves still. And that has got a fat belly, but it uh, looks like that probably is something that's been eating. That's another good crappy, y'all. Boom. You know, we probably, let, this, let me get this fish in. You know, we probably, uh, oh, that's another nice fish. Another nice fish. You know, 
Look at that fish there, boom. You know, probably there are some fish out there in deep water. See, that fish doesn't have any eggs in it. But that is a good crappie there. Nice crappie. I'm going to switch over and do a little vertical jig. And these fish, being in this shade, let me get right on top of them. Now we're just going to see what happens. Now let's make note of this, y'all. Now I had, that, that's my vertical jigging rod. Now look, that fish bit that red, green, chartreuse tail hair jig. Right there, that's the one he bit. And I had that shad, that gray looking one on the bottom. That's a good fish. It's 12 inch fish there, y'all. Oh, nice crappy. And so I'll just go over really quickly. One thing that I do personally, uh, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna show you this lake map and I'm gonna kind of show you what that I do, I decide to do. And it, it'll just, it, it kind of cuts down on the amount of pressure that you actually put on yourself. I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna show you this on the map. Uh, so here's a, here's a, here's the whole so this is the entire Sharon Harris Lake. You see these branches. And I put in at cross point. And what I decided to do, I'm just going to fish, more than likely, just fish this one arm here. It's got, if you zoom in, it's got some deep water. Uh, it's got some fairly deep water all the way back to this flat back here in the back. And I'll check out all these little coves. I'll check for brush uh, in the center. And that's kind of what I am aiming to do. So what I'm doing is, is twofold. Uh, so this is only my second time to the lake. So I'm gonna run my side scan and I'm looking for brush that's off at deeper water, as well as I'm gonna check brush that's up against the bank as, as well. And you know, it, this is our early part of May. Some crappie are still shallow, some are still deep. And so if I find brush that's out in deeper water, say anywhere from 15, 16 to 20 feet of water, that's gonna potentially hold crappie for when I come back later in the summer, if you get my drift. So I'm accomplishing a couple of things by, uh, by running my side scan and is scanning for 30 minutes and then fishing for 30 minutes if you will. And you could do 30 minutes and fish an hour depending on if you find some fish. I encourage you if you find fish to, uh, you know, to, to catch those fish if you own them. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps you. Downsize the area that you're going to be looking at and concentrate on that area. If I come back again, I may concentrate on a different area. And once I come back three or four different times, uh, I'll, I'll know the area fairly well and be able to catch fish uh, basically any time of the year. Uh, so anyway, hope that helps you. time baby two at a time <laughs> yeah these are buckfish here these smaller ones here they're protecting that bed and uh <laughs> just a little fry you know anytime you come to a new lake uh the, the best thing that you possibly could do and I'm gonna just lower this in the water I'm I'm kind of right I'm 
kind of right over the tree. I mean, the end of the tree, it's got some limbs sticking up. And I really don't want to, I really don't want to run my trolling motor. And folks, I'm telling you, I don't know, I don't know what's in this cove, but I might have to put a bass lure. I ain't gonna lie to you. Bass have been chasing shad in this cove all over the place. And I mean, just, it just two swirls just came up. Little fish right there. And now the wind is gonna blow me, up, blow me back the other way. I got two jigs on, I don't wanna get hung up. Um, definitely don't wanna get hung in this tree and lose these jigs. And I'm trying to be as quiet as possible. Uh, if I can say one thing, I have noticed you know, many folks have bad stuff to say about live scope or whatever, but I have learned so much about fish behavior. And I have been fishing for crappy. You can see them in 20 feet of water, be trying to get a jig to them. And the fish would be fairly close, within like 10 feet of, uh, of the end of the boat. You're looking at them, trying to get a lure to them. And someone walk and step off on this deck, and just that step on that deck and vibration fish is gone. Sometimes they're a little more tolerable. I notice the ones that are more tolerable are out in most of the time where there's a lot more boat traffic. But So now we float it back away. I'm going to ease back up there, drop this lure back in and see if we can catch another fish. That fish is basically out here because there's a shade line right here that runs about 50 feet away from the bank. And that is one of the primary reasons that crappie is here. After that sun gets up, these crappie will pull off and go to the bottom of this cove. So if you come to the lake and you're looking and you're struggling, early in the morning those crappie are going to be scattered. They're going to be up after shad in the shade. Look on the shady side, always for crappie. And then as the sun gets up high, they'll drop down in the deepest portion of the cove and just kind of string out through here. And that's another reason I came in and I checked the middle of the cove coming in. But they seem to be more on the shady side here. May not get that in the back though. Well, I tell you what I got. I got a fish on. I got a fish on. And I'm hung. And I'm hung. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get, ever get this out. That was pure luck. Now look. So I was hung with the bottom. I was hung with the bottom hook. Fish come up and hit the top one because it was dangling around. Ain't that something? That's wild. Anyway, I was just lucky to get this back. Just a little fry, y'all. Now, folks, I want to point out something. <clears throat> I've actually switched my lure. That is the uh, LC Shad in the uh, Virginia Shad color. Uh, it's always been a good color. What a fairly clear. Now, I'm sitting in about four feet of water. There's a big flat back here. And just to show you, there's no... There's no there's, you know, there's no cover back here. That's a little buckfish. But the crappy will sometimes be back here on these flats in the back of these coves and, you know, just scattered out over the flat. And there seems to be a little branch that, that actually comes in on the back side of this. Uh, I came in this cove, you've noticed the banks are much steeper 
but that didn't necessarily equate to uh, a deeper cove. And there's a big tree, high banks, a little bit of shade. And so not necessarily you should avoid a cove that maybe doesn't have a lot of brush on it because uh, there's still there's still fish here. Uh, these are small fish. Now we ain't going to mess with these a long time. <clears throat> We're looking for the bigger ones. But that just goes to show you that uh, just because it don't have any laydowns in it uh, doesn't mean that there's not fish here. Now this is a better fish here. Up here. I'm gonna show you these fish are these fish are actively spawning. See that scales there? And that this fish eat that lure. That's a lot better fish right there, y'all. Boom. Good crappy. This is a little better. So you can come, you know, it'll probably be about a week and a half. I may release this video. If you want to come to Sharon Harris, uh, look in the middle and the backs of these coves. You notice the wind is blowing in this cove. And these crappie, that is a good keeper size crappie. These crappie can sit right here in the middle, you know, and shad are just coming over top of them, makes for easy picking. Because the current's pushing back into this cove. And, you know, of course, if you were spider rigging, you could come in here and just ease, ease along. The water's not deep. It's about five feet out in front of me. It's kind of a flat back on this side right here. And uh, they're just sitting up on this flat right here, you know, waiting on a meal or spawning, whatever reason. And basically, I'm just casting. I'm casting out to them and keeping the lure up in the water column. I'm throwing a 16. And, you know, a lot of these fish are up off the bottom. And I'm going to just keep my rod tip high. And I'm just moving that lure through the water column. And, you know, waiting on a, waiting on a strike. Boom, right there. He picked it up. You've probably seen the water jump. And this is a good fish right here, y'all. This is a good one. Ah, oh yeah. That's a good fish right there. Good crappy right there. Pretty fish, baby, pretty fish, boom. Hey guys, we're getting ready to end this video. So look, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment, we enjoy seeing your comments. Appreciate all the comments I've been getting. Appreciate all the subscribers I've been getting. Uh, remember, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Don't forget, hit that like button, click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wild life. And I'll see you on the water.